sides sound great, don't they? I really like the sound of a bottleneck. Um, I was using a steel slide for ages. Uh, say ages, I've only really got into it um, in the last few months. Um, but I find the sound of a bottleneck just sounds uh, just sweeter than a steel. I'll, I'll show you the difference. So this is a steel slide I've got. Uh, same guitar, same settings, everything. Just. <coughs> slides from well unless you've got plenty of time on your hands I'd just go and buy one really um, because if you intend to make one yourself well uh, it, it takes it takes a bit of time and practice to um, to make one that's usable but if you're interested uh, I'll show you how it's done so the first part of creating a bottleneck slide is to actually cut the neck off the bottle um, so you need a bottle I like a wine bottle I also like the contents um, preferably a, a bottle with a cork rather than a screw top they just seem to work better uh, and it choose one with with quite a, a straight neck like that uh, I find they work the best um, and so what we're going to do is score a line with a glass cutter around the neck of the bottle now you can get these jig things um, you can get them from eBay and Amazon this this was a, a couple of quid off eBay I think um, I'll put a link in the comments in case you're interested in finding one of these now the problem I've, I've got with this is it doesn't it, it's okay for, for scoring around the bottle itself but it doesn't adapt too well for the actual neck of the bottle so um, I've kind of made a, a little bit of an adaptation and I do it on the workbench. Uh, so I'll just um, change the camera angle and, and score this now. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what I'm actually doing is I've, I'm just laying this flat on the workbench and it's roughly the right height for the neck of the bottle to go against. Um, I just don't know whether you can see that very well. I'm just going to tilt it down a bit. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> roughly the right height for the neck of the bottle. Um, and then I'm putting the end of the bottle up against um, this um, uh, bench hook here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is keep this straight and then just score around the bottle itself so just turn in the bottle not the cutter or anything else just the bottle against the glass cutter there and just scoring around the neck and only go around once and try and keep it as even as possible and meet up on the other side so there we've got very very faint score right round the edge of the bottle but that should be just what we need to move on to the next step. So once it's been scored the next thing we should do, need to do is use some boiling water and some ice water we're using the contrasts of hot and cold uh, to put some stress on the glass and hopefully break it where that score is where that score line is so let's give it a go and see if it works I've got some water boiling on the on the in the pan there and I've got some cold water in the sink so I'm just going to dip it into the boiling water for a while um, and wait to hear the crack. can take a while. You can also do it with a candle so if you've got a flame on a candle you can just rotate the neck of the bottle over the flame and that will heat up the glass as well. Um, so let's give it a go. 
Yeah, there was a good crack there. This could be a failure because it looks as though it's it hasn't yeah, it's cracked. I can see the the glass is cracked, but it hasn't cracked along our score mark. So this could be a failure. I'll just give it another go in the hot and see how we get on. Ah, there we go. That's the way. And as you can see, it hasn't come off cleanly. So yeah, that's that's a failure. So there you go. That's how not to do it. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to take this glass out of the boiling water. And we'll try on the second one. See if this one works any better. I think the glass is a bit thinner on this, so you never know. Let's give it a go. Yeah, you can get very mixed results with this. Sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so it's worth having um, a good stock of bottles ready to, to cut the necks off. Um, if you're like me, you shouldn't have too much problem accumulating the, the bottles. You can use wine or beer bottles, uh, whatever is your preference. I like a nice red wine. Let's try this in the cold. No, nothing yet. No, we may have to go backwards and forwards a couple of times. Oh, there we go. Did you hear that crack? There we go. That's off and that's come off cleanly. You see? That's much better. So that, that is going to be a usable slide. So now that I've got my bottleneck, uh, you'll see it's, it's still quite jagged around the top there. Um, it's come off quite cleanly in terms of, you know, how cleanly you can get them off the bottle. But that's not the finished product. You do need to do some extra work to make it usable as a slide. Um, otherwise, you're risking yourself some serious injury. And the last thing you want uh, as a guitarist is cut fingers. So the next thing I want to do with my bottleneck is grind down the edges to make it um, smooth so it's, uh, it's not dangerous and it's not going to cut our fingers while we're playing. So I'm going to use some uh, aluminium oxide paper. This is a 60 grit and I'm just going to do this by hand. There's a couple of different methods you can use. You can do it by hand. Um, or you can, you know, use a Dremel or some, some kind of grinding stone. <clears throat> so I'm going to do this first one by hand uh, and then I'll polish it up afterwards with a Dremel and we'll look at the, the, the difference and the improvements. So I just uh, placed the oxide paper on the bench and just rubbed the bottom there in circular motion on the top and just Keep going. And it takes a while to get the control. And gradually you'll see it starts to smooth out um, and the jagged edges will disappear. Yeah, it's going down quicker with the coarser grain paper. Um, so I'm just going to use that for a while, just to get most of the edges off. Use a coarse grit to start, and as it gets down smoother, you can use a finer grit to uh, make it a lot smoother again. That's all you do, just keep going and going until it's uh, it's as smooth as you'd like it to be. And don't forget, of course, to um, do these edges. So you want to roll your paper smaller to get it into these inside edges. And it is quite a laborious process. Um, it's 
time consuming I think is, is probably the best word but if you've got the time and you enjoy this kind of thing well why not and of course the outside edges as well Obviously the aim is not to leave any sharp edges. That's not bad but we can improve on it so we'll keep going. And obviously when you get down to it use a, a finer uh, grit paper and that will really start to kind of polish it and smooth it up. The other method is to use one of these Dremel type tools. You can use a genuine Dremel or this is just a cheap rechargeable one. Uh, mini grinder as it's called. Uh, again I'll put a link in the description just in case you're interested. Um, and I'm using uh, one of these uh, grinding stones here and what I want to try and do with this is put a bevel on both the inside and the outside edges. <clears throat> One final thing you might want to try is uh, polishing it up and I'm just using this car uh, T-cut colour restorer but it's actually a very fine abrasive cream um, so oops try again make sure you shake the bottle I'm just going to try some of this with a cloth and see how we get on. Dremel, if you've got one, with a, pull a buffing tip on it, just to polish it. Okay, so there it is, that's the finished bottleneck. Um, it's fairly smooth, it's fairly nice. It could have, could, could have carried on polishing it and you know making it nice, but as long as all the jagged edges and everything are gone and it's not gonna cut me, there's, there's not really much point carrying on. Uh, okay, so that's it. <coughs> guitars and making stuff and daft songs please subscribe to my channel thank you